Hi, my name is Kurt Hagman, Chairman of the Board of Supervisors for San Bernardino County. And we're here with our Business of the Quarter, Ontario International Airport, with our CEO, Adif Akari. Adif, great to be here. Such a wonderful gem of the Inland Empire. And so much is going on that we had to name Ontario International Airport our Business of the Quarter for so many reasons. But for those who don't know the history of it, you know, we're in Ontario. But uh, tell us a little bit about the background, how we got from where we were to where we are today. Yeah, so it's been a little over five years, and it's been such an amazing journey. Um, we, we started off as taking over the airport and really trying to build this economic driver for the region. And let me stop you right there, because some people don't know that Ontario is, was owned by LAX prior to five years ago. Correct. So it was owned by LAX. The transfer officially happened November 1st, 2016. And our board took over. And, and thank you for being a, a board member as well. Um, and in those five years, we've added a number of new flights. You can go to Hawaii, you can go to Taiwan, you can go directly to New York. And we've added um, from our existing service providers with Southwest, more destinations. Same thing with American Airlines and United. And on top of that, cargo. Cargo has such, been such a big win for us and for this region. If you look at what happened during the pandemic and the um, e-commerce and how prominent it became, um, we were truly that supply chain hub for the western part of the United States. Well, let's start off with the passengers. Um, I know when we took over about five years ago, it's grown quite a bit before the pandemic, right? Correct. So what was the numbers before to what it was right prior to pandemic? So we were gonna hit six million passengers and then the pandemic happened obviously that put a pause um, this last year we were just a little over four and a half million and we're confident that we're gonna end this year at a little over five and a half million pre-pandemic we were the one of the fastest growing airports in north america for passengers and cargo correct and i understand since we kind of got out into our recovery now we're the fastest recovery airport as well, is that correct? So we're the fastest recovery airport in California and we're in the top five in the nation. For the fourth year in the row, the fastest growing airport in the United States as well. That's fantastic. So lots of new choices for our residents here in the Inland Empire to go travel. Yes. The exciting one, I remember, how long ago now was Hawaiian Airlines? That a, was a fun one. A year ago yesterday. A year ago yesterday, so it's already been a year. And then we have more international flights that we may be seeing in the future. Correct. Can you give us a hint of some of the places that are talking to us right now that we don't currently have? Um, I would say that some of the places that are talking to us right now, um, it might be a little chilly there in the winter where you can do some skiing. But international. Um, but international. Um, one of the airlines that, that has come out publicly, Norse, um, with flying to Oslo. So we will continue talking to them and, and they are looking to get started during the summer, and that really gives us that connectivity to the European continent. Which is exciting, because now we got more options to fly out. And one of the things that always that my residents bring up to me is how much they love the experience here at Ontario, especially, it's kind of like the opposite side of the spectrum, the experience when they go to LAX. The best thing about our airport is the ease of access to and from. So you can get to the airport, check in your bag, get through security all within 13 minutes. So after that, you can kick back, so have 13 minutes. 13 minutes is the average time to get through security um, once you get to the airport. Um, and that's the best thing our, past, our customers love about our airport. You know, our tagline as a brand is SoCal so easy. And we want, we live and breathe that in the way we operate with our partners at the airport. And I know there's been a lot of terminal improvements, a yes. lot of investment by our third party vendors restaurants, shopping, can you kind of give us a little bit what's going on with there? Absolutely. So in the next couple of weeks, you'll see our lounges opening back up by Aspire. Um, they'll be coming back uh, and then we have a duty free that will be coming towards the end of summer. We have Brewery X and with Top Golf simulators. Uh, Chick-fil-A, if you like to eat more chicken, will be there. Um, if you like to eat fresh, Subway will be opening up. And then we also have our existing Rock and Brews, Wahoo's Fish Tacos, etc. So we have a number of locations by October 2022. If people haven't been to the terminal in a year, they won't recognize it, it'll look completely different. Well, besides the convenience for us to fly to where we wanna to fly to, um, you mentioned already about the cargo aspects of the airport and what an economic driver it is for the Inland Empire. Can you kind of name some of the partners we have and, and you talked about a little bit of growing the international as well. Absolutely, so uh, UPS, FedEx, 
Amazon, we're talking to a few others as well. And, and from an international perspective, we have you know, China Airlines has been a huge partner for us. And while they have operated passenger flights to Taipei, um, they have done a lot in the cargo space as well. And with the opening of the new facilities here in the next couple of months, we should see more of that, right? We would see more of that. So Norse, who I mentioned earlier, um, one of their big cargo items that they want to bring is salmon. Thousands and thousands of pounds of salmon. Um, so we're going to be able to let them do that and um, clear it here so they can um, you know, move it within Southern California. And what's important for us as an airport operator is income to the airport that's not being taxed on the passenger. Correct. So we are driving those costs down for those passenger airlines by paying with other businesses in the airport, including the off-site land that the airport authority owns, so that we can have the lowest rates for our residents and bring in the most competition for the airlines here to have more destinations in the future. Well, usually we have the business quarters like a small business with the impact, but this is actually a large business. Right. What kind of financial impact do you see um, in terms of, I guess, just general business support and everything for the region? So before the transfer of the airport, the estimation was $5 billion of an economic impact to the region. Uh, we're in the midst of an economic impact study right now, and we're estimating it to be anywhere between 8 and $10 billion for the region, a year of economic impact um, into the Inland Empire. And not to count the thousands of jobs that are either direct on the airport or associated with all the cargo movement and passenger movement around the area. So we have, on airport campus, we have over 45,000 jobs that are provided. And that increased significantly during um, COVID because the e-commerce um, was booming and you know, UPS, FedEx, and Amazon, they just kept hiring people. A lot of exciting stuff to come, a lot of exciting stuff in the last five years. We appreciate having you as the, the leader of our, our organization here. And on behalf of the county, I'm going to present this resolution. Thank you very much. To be our business of the quarter. And we want to thank you for everything you're doing in the, in the region and the continuous success for Ontario National Airport and for our lifestyle here and for our residents. <music>